This is Dr. Bob Hoyt uh, narrating Orange Data Mining Part 5. Uh, in this particular video, we're going to focus on data mining NHANES data. We will be using Orange and we will focus in this beginning on descriptive statistics. Uh, but let's start by looking at the actual Excel spreadsheet. There's two tabs or workbooks at the bottom. I happen to have the code book open, and so we'll start with that. This is a very extensive uh, data set. You can see the NHANES code. If you look at the individual files on NHANES, they're labeled with their own type of abbreviation. You, and I've translated that into more common language uh, and describe where it falls in the spreadsheet in terms of column. And further explanation, for instance, one is female, zero is male. So the data set itself, uh, I would encourage everybody to look at. It's really extensive. These names are fake names, but they match the gender. They're there just for practical use. There are some medications as well, uh, but you can see the demographics. Uh, that are there, including some social determinants of health. Uh, this next uh, area, uh, which is the questionnaire area, here you see diabetes. They simply ask, have you been told you're diabetic, yes or no? So that's zero or one. Uh, and so there's like six or seven there. There are also uh, history about smoking or drinking, body measurements here, then begins extensive lab work. Uh, going over all the common lab tests, and then a few that are less common, such the cotinine uh, tells if you've been exposed to cigarette smoke, either actively or passively, in other words, primary or secondary exposure. There's your A1C, fasting blood sugar, actually insulin levels. Uh, but here it gets fairly interesting. Uh, I was able to add grip strength. There's pulmonary function test. Uh, there's weekly activity, sunlight, which is interesting because you have vitamin D levels, so you can compare the two. Uh, the NHANES people were late in adding B12 and TSH for thyroid testing. I added that. There's one cognitive score uh, that's rated between 1 and 40. Uh, there's your vitamin D. And then diabetes, let me comment. This is different than the other diabetes. Uh, the other diabetes was qualitative. This is quantitative, meaning that anybody that had a hemoglobin A1C over 6.5 was labeled as diabetic, and that they, they were given a one, otherwise a zero. So you have quantitative and qualitative, if you will. Okay, let's go to look at our orange, and I will upload this to the Data World site for those on Data World. But let's begin with the file widget. You can upload your own files here. There already there are many that are already in here as part of it. Uh, so you can upload your own from here. You can uh, look and see what's included. I think there's six that are in the file. You can uh, also download one for analysis just by putting a URL, if you will. You can look here and it says 303 instances, which means rows, 13 features, which means columns. Uh, and it just says this could be a classification model because you have a target of, of in this case, heart disease. Uh, it, yes or no, if you will, is the target. But what's very convenient is if orange mistakenly labeled age as numerical and it should have been categorical, you can change it. And also very important, this feature can be the target or outcome you're trying to prove in a model, or you can just skip it. There are times when you don't want to include, for instance, sequence number, ID number, you may not need that or want that. Once you've ch made any changes, you hit apply. And then this one, data sets, I've already covered in another uh, video, but again, uh, there are now about 90 data sets covering all kinds of subjects. 
medical and non-medical that are very convenient. All right, we're going to go down to this lower section. Later we'll come, not on this video, but later we'll show how we do filtering uh, to do very interesting studies, including correlations. But let's just start. This is the NHANES data set. Here you, you look at it, there's 4,571 rows, 73 columns, 9.5% uh, missing data, uh, because not everybody got this test or they weren't available, whatever. Right now I don't have any target uh, of designated or we, we could go down and make, di well, actually diabetes is a set as target. I'm gonna change that. Uh, I'm gonna skip it right now and apply. Uh, so that's how you start. And a data table is useful because it's like an Excel spreadsheet. You get a chance to look at what's there. Uh, it doesn't have a whole lot of other features, but if you make a change in your data, you can always attach the, a data table to it and confirm whether it took place or not. You can, uh, order things, for instance, notice I, I'm here, I'm going from young to old, so it starts at 60, excuse me, 21, and goes to 80. So you can go either way, or you can go back, let's go back to the original order. So this is very convenient to always look at your data with a data table. Feature statistics gives you some uh, statistics. Here, if you go down, we've colored it by gender, uh, and let me just look. Uh, I don't recall whether female is red or blue, but right now that doesn't make any difference. You can highlight these and send them forward. If you highlight just age, for instance, you can send that to a data table or save uh, data widget and just save age column only or, and, and have the age on everybody in mind only that. So this, first of all, gives you a visual distribution you see the mean, mode, median, dispersion, minimum, maximum, and missing. Keep in mind that if the mean and median are similar, then the data is very well distributed, has a normal distribution. However, let's go down and look, find one where that's not the case. For instance, uh, I don't know if we can quickly find cholesterol, but that's one where the median and the mean are quite different. And as a result of that, you know automatically, or let's see about insulin, not too close. So it's, again, we can look at distributions, but this is a way to look, for instance, you could go all the way down and look uh, at a variety of things. Uh, this is B12, and again, this is by gender, male and female. But this is a good starting point to look at what the, the range is, the minimum, maximum, so forth. And then the pivot table is another way to get some uh, dis uh, descriptive statistics, if you will. This is a case where you, you would set, let's just say, we'll put gender here, and we'll put uh, hypertension, yes or no, and then we'll put a numerical here. We'll put Medicaid and then value. Let me go back down here. That should have been a numerical number. We could put this, uh, let's find total cholesterol. So what we're looking at here at the top is Medicare, yes or no, and gender, yes or no, in the sense one is female, is zero. And you're trying to see if there's basically any difference between them. Uh, and this is just another way to look at data. Uh, 
Gender and Medicaid is not a very uh, common differentiation, but I'm just using that as an example. And then one of my favorites is box plot because it does so much. First of all, the top window is called variable, the bottom window is called subgroups. So you can look at it per subgroup or set none down here, and then just look at individuals like age, will we'll give you a basically the distribution of age, if you will. Uh, but wh where it gets interesting is when you, you can do several things here that are interesting. For instance, you can set, uh, let's set gender up here and gender down here. And what you can see then is for one female, there's 2,331 and uh, for males, 2,240. So it gives you a nice uh, a comparison. And more importantly, down below, this is a chi-square test with a p-value. These are So it's not statistically the same. There is a difference between male and female. So there's a p-value. Well, you can do the same. Let's say we want to look at, uh, we'll just pick something, uh, we want to look at thyroid levels, TSH male and female, and this now is a t-test because it's numerical, and the answer, they're not statistically any different. Uh, you can include uh, other things like that. Uh, we can include systolic blood pressure, and there is a difference here. So in women, their systolic blood pressure tends to be lower than male. You can highlight this and send it to a data table also, Almost any one of the orange charts are uh, interactive. You click on it and you can select only those in any kind of bar graph, histogram, and so forth. We'll cover more of this with visualization, but I wanted to point out that, so the box plot is useful to look at numerical variables, but because it includes a t-test and a chi-square, it's a great starting point because if you're interested in let's just say, let's pick asthma, that's what you're interested in, and you want to look at um, perhaps the force vital capacity, you can do a variety of things uh, like that. You can pick whatever subgroup in the bottom you're interested in. So it's very user-friendly. We'll get into that in the next session on data visualization.